Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi CWK Live every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I am your host, Dan Z, thrilled to talk some Star Wars with each and every one of you. So, still operating under the backup computer, but I think it's going to work just fine. You can hear me. We're excited. Hey, Carly is here. Hello, Carly. Good to have you. Ross, hello. Matthew says, happy 400th. It was a wonderful episode. Loved all the guests. Well, thank you, our guests for the 400th episode of Coffee with Kenobi was, well, they were my wife, Deanna Zair, and my son, Mason Zair, and we had a great time. It was very fun to share that side of the story with everybody because we know, you know, of course, the show itself, but what you don't always hear is the behind-the-scenes stuff and what goes on in our household and what goes into the Coffee with Kenobi machine and gets it running. So it was very, very fun to share it with each and every one of you. So let's say hello to everybody. Ross is here. Hello, Ross. Good to have you. Carly, it's great to see you, my friend. Glad you are doing well. And Matthew, we said hello to you, of course. Matthew, awesome to have you. Hello, Brian. Mason is here piloting Mrs. Zare's Facebook account. How, how old am I? Facebook account? Uh, Carter, hello, Carter. Good to have you, buddy. Josh is back on the show. Minta will not be with us, but Minta, we will save a spot for you next week. Blake, hello, buddy. How are you? Uh, is the microphone okay? Is it too far away? Let me know if you need me to get a little bit closer. Tyler is back. Tyler, it's good to have you, bro. Very good to have you. Ben is here. Thank you so much for the congrats. Mary is here, of course, as well. So we've got a fun show. We've got a very fun show. Hello, Aaron. Good to have you, buddy. We've got a fun show because we're going to talk about your top five favorite Darth Maul moments. And we've got an announcement about next week's show. And then we've also got, uh, well, some new things came out in the world of Star Wars. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. Oh, Mary says the sound is good. I am glad to hear that. Very glad to hear that. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So, install later. All right. So what's brewing in the world of Star Wars this week is we had announcements of some new action figures. So let's go ahead and take a look at what was presented. I'm guessing a lot of you already purchased these. So, our merchandise showcase. Uh, Hasbro did something really cool. They introduced a number of four new action figures from the Black Series, the six inch line naturally, that are from the Legends line of comics back in the day, Dark Horse Comics and Marvel Comics. These are classic figures that people really love. So, uh, people were very excited. This is, uh, what is his name? Carnor Jax. This is from um, an old Dark Empire series that was very, very popular, very beloved. Uh, you can see the purple interior of the cape. And, of course, it's very much a, a royal guard. It always kind of reminded me of Captain Cardinal from the actual canonical stuff as well. Josh says he's lucky enough that this year my birthday lands on this Thursday, so I'll get something else to look forward to for that day. Well, great. I'm glad to hear that, buddy. So glad to hear that. So Carter says it would be very cool to get some figures from the High Republic books. I agree with you, dude. I hope that is on the way, and I know that the authors themselves will be very stoked about that, too. Okay, so we've got this first figure, Carnor Jax, and then we have, well, this one is my son is going to love this is Darth Maul uh, from the Dark Horse uh, miniseries, uh, the famous shirtless Darth Maul. Uh, he's definitely been to the gym a time or two, but it's very, very cool. It's a very, it's a great looking figure, a great looking figure. Uh, Blake says, I'm still waiting for my Boba Fett from Mando season two. Oh man, same here, dude. That'd be great. Tyler says, Jax and Maul are beauties. I try to stick with canon figures, but they may find their way onto my shelf. And I haven't actually checked in a while to see if these are sold out yet or not. Mason loves them, naturally. And Matthew says, yes, how appropriate. And they are. That is appropriate because we're talking about our top five favorite Darth Maul moments. So maybe he will show up as well. Number three, it to me is the biggest one of the bunch. This is Jackson, the famous cannibal green bunny rabbit bounty hunter from the original Star Wars line from the late 70s. He's always been a fan favorite. Kevin Scott brought him into canon through the Star Wars Adventures comics. And now they've made a figure of him. So pretty fun. So Mason is super stoked, as I expected. 
So this one, I that was the one. This is the only one I was tempted to get. I actually didn't pull the trigger because to me, it doesn't look like the animated or the comic book one. It looks a little more photorealistic, I guess, if, if that's even the right term for it. But I know a lot of people love them. I know Matt Martin is a huge fan, Matt Martin of Lucasfilm. So they are cool. It is cool. Undoubtedly a great collectible, but I was hoping for a little more of a cartoon look. But either way, it's cool that they offered it. Blake said, if anyone hasn't read that original Marvel comic run, they need to. It's essential Star Wars history. I agree, and there's a great uh, series of trades about it as well, too. And then the last one is Luke Skywalker from Heir to the Jedi. I'm sorry, Heir to the Empire. Heir to the Jedi would be the canonical one. This is from the classic Timothy Zahn. It's got the 50th Lucasfilm there logo on the bottom left. Uh, ben says he's not a fan of Jackson. He still got it. Well, how about that? That's cool. So I didn't get the picture, but the, and I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's Y-L-S-A-R-M-I, Salarmi. I'm not sure how the, the correct pronunciation is about that. But it has those little reptilian creatures that seem to repel the force. And Luke has one that can wrap around his neck for the action figure itself. So pretty fun. Pretty fun. So that is the four. That is the four of the merchandise that was revealed last week and made collectors very, very excited because it's some cool stuff. Taj says there's going to be another Hasbro Pulse Con in a couple weeks. I bet we'll get a lot of Black Series and Marvel Legends reveals. And in fact, I agree with that, buddy. I expect that to happen as well. So without further ado, let's jump into our top fives for tonight. Our top five for tonight is top five Darth Maul moments. Now, some of your list may be very well from when he was known as Maul, or it can be when he's Darth Maul. Either way, totally works for me. Let's see what everybody has. Now, this is the dramatic, exciting moment, but Mason wanted me to share and change the lighting here because we're blue, change it to red because of Darth Maul. I don't think it lights, <laughs> you know, it, it is what it is, right? So we're going to go with the red for tonight's Sith theme. Josh says, I really dig the Heir to the Empire. Luke, don't know where to get it. Galaxy's Edge, please, but definitely need to try. Well, they're all available on Hasbro Pulse and on, I believe, Big Bad Toy Store and Entertainment Earth. And if you go to our website or if you go to our Instagram page, Josh, you can see where they are as well. Matt, don't worry, buddy. You may find you hear some tonight that will resonate for you. Well, Lane, hello, Lane. Good to have you. Lance is my favorite teacher. That's very nice of you to say. I really appreciate that. You are an awesome student, naturally. So, Lane, did you get a top five ready? Let's see what everybody has for their top fives for favorite Darth Maul moments. All right, number five for me is the duel with Ahsoka. This is probably going to be higher on a lot of people's lists. But for me, the sequence where she duels Maul on uh, Mandalore, basically the last four episodes of the Man of the Clone Wars animated series, that was huge. That was very exciting. It was done with motion capture, and it was tremendous. The acting was great as well. So, hey, awesome. I love that part. It's really good. Really, really good. Number five for Blake, I randomly asked my whole, I asked my wife, who knows nothing about Maul, she had a Maul moment, and her answer is him facing Obi-Wan in episode one. So that's my number five. Hey, that is a great one. I know that one's going to come up later, for sure. And here come other people's guesses, or their number fives as well. Number five for Mary, uh, the final fight sequence in The Phantom Menace with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, certainly. Number five for Ben, Maul rules Mandalore, reestablishing his threat and flexing his power, killing Free Vizsla and Satine in the process. It's sad, but it establishes him as a proper villain. Certainly, there's no doubt about that, Ben. Number five for Tyler, duel on Tatooine, a really great first look at him in action. He comes hauling in in his awesome speeder and holds his own against Qui-Gon. I love that too because there's that anticipation. He's he's all hooded up. That one's a really that's a good choice. Number five for Ross being reintroduced to Maul with Savage Opress. Finds his mechanical spider brother in the tunnel caves on Lotho Minor. Yes. Episode four uh, season four, episode twenty one. That was the first episode to start with the Red Clone Wars. Yep. The Red Clone Wars word mark. That's right. And part of the red tonight too. Awesome. Number five for Josh. The revival arc, the reintroduction of Maul and Clone Wars is fantastic. 
Great acting by Sam Witwer and James Arnold Taylor. Others too, plus these episodes have Hondo. You simply can't go wrong with Hondo. I agree. I would love to do top five Hondo moments, but I'm not sure if everybody is as familiar with Hondo as they are everybody else. But I love Hondo. Anyway, number five, Aaron. Seeing him again in Solo. Hashtag make Solo 2 happen. Oh, for sure. James is here. Hey, James. He says, final duel in episode one where he quills quite when he, but I'm going to try to get in that. James with a tongue twister. Final duel in episode one where he kills Qui-Gon. Yes, certainly. Very powerful stuff. And Brian's number five when he fights against and beats Pre Vizsla. Great intro to fighting a Mandalorian. Yes. Mace's number five is when he appears in Solo. At the end, that fun little surprise. I'll never forget seeing that in the theater for the first time and have everybody ooh and ah when they heard that mysterious voice and wondering who that was going to be. All right, that was five. Number four, for me, Vader passed. Let me explain what that means. At the end of Star Wars Rebel Season 2, there's a moment where Maul reveals himself as the old master, and Darth Vader, Darth Vader, Darth Vader, really? Darth Vader flies down in his TIE fighter, and when he gets to the bottom, or toward, he hovers kind of over the planet itself, he's like standing on top of the TIE fighter. And Maul looks at him and basically, I don't know the exact line, but he basically says, I'm out. He knows that Darth Vader is way, way, way too powerful for him. And he leaves instantly. And I really like that. Just a quick little nod to the power of Vader. Sort of a weird, bizarro, funhouse passing of the torch, which is pretty cool. Awesome. Uh, number four for Josh, Duel of the Fates. I mean, right? Yeah, Duel of the Fates is great. All everybody else's number fours are trickling in. I will share Mason's. Mason's number four is him fighting Qui-Gon Jinn when it's just the two of them one-on-one -on -one in Phantom Menace, naturally. For four for Ross, Mother Talzin of the Night Sisters, fixing Maul through dark magic on Dathomir. He's a very Edgar Allan Poe-esque character after the process. Clone Wars season four, episode twenty-two. Thank you, Ross, for the for the actual episode on that. That was very helpful. I like that too. It's a very creepy sequence for sure, but interesting in a lot of ways about how both characters are. Number four for Tyler is Duel versus Ahsoka, like my number five. I love the choreography of the duel using motion capture. really makes a difference, plus their conversation before Duel is one of the most important in the entire saga. Yes, I agree. And she says, uh, basically, that's also where she says, you, you actually, it's good thing my master isn't here because you wouldn't last very long against him. Which, ironically, leads sort of to my number four. Number four for Ben. Um, meet, the meeting number two between Kenobi and Maul plus Savage Adventurous. Such an odd place to find Kenobi to find himself partnering with Ventress. I like that one as well. That one's very cool, uh, seeing the four of them together like that. Number four for Blake. Maul with the Rebels gang in those underground, underground temples during the season two finale episode. He was so mysterious and didn't know if he'd support the heroes or if he was a lone wolf. Yeah, the he's uh that's kind of when we start to really see more of his the way he manipulates people, uh in a, in a different way. Number four for James, not sure uh, the issue, but there was a now Legends comic where Maul fought Vader in a lightsaber duel, taking place after the Battle of Yavin with Vader win, of course. Yeah, I remember that too. It was like a kind of a Star Wars Infinities Elseworlds kind of a thing. I have that one now that you mentioned that. That was cool. That's a good one, James. A really good one. And I said Mason's number four was him fighting Qui-Gon Jinn. So yeah, great stuff. Excellent stuff. All right, let's go ahead and jump. Oh, here's another number four. Number four for Aaron. Battle with Free Vizsla. I'm sure these would be tweaked a little if I had more time to think about them. I only just saw the topic a minute or before logging on. That's all right. Glad to have you, Aaron, and, and super glad to get your feedback for sure. Brian's number four, when Maul and Ezra join the light and dark holocron, so they both see what they're looking for. Ooh, that's a good one. Had I thought about that, I would have put that one on mine as well. Excellent choice, Brian. All right, number three. Number three of top five Maul slash Darth Maul moments. Number three for me is Maul and Savage versus Palpatine. Now, it doesn't end well for Maul. In fact, on some of my, almost all of my Maul fights that I'm picking, he doesn't win. Now that I think about it. Interesting. But when he and Savage fight Palpatine, that is one of the best duels you'll ever see in Star Wars lightsabers for anything, period. It's, it's tremendous. Very, very exciting. Very, very intense. The choreography is great. 
and the power of Palpatine is just another level, like 10 levels higher than Maul, who's great. So that is my number three. Number three for Matthew. The fight between Maul and Ahsoka, great battle and a lead up to the battle. Number three for Mary is the end of Solo. Definitely. That's my honorable mention. I would, if I had a thought of that, I probably would have put that as number four. But So that's a good one. Number three for Tyler, ruler of Mandalore. His battle with Pre Vizsla is brutal and shows how big of a threat he really is. Certainly. Josh, the Seeds of Mandalore. Uh, most definitely his favorite episode in the Clone Wars. And Maul is obviously excellent in them. When he starts fighting, he's like a wild animal unleashed. Ruthless, powerful, and terrifying. Oh, nice. He no longer cares about Mandalore. He's only trying to make sure he makes it out alive because he's aware of Sidious's plan. That's right. I like that, too. That would have been in my list as well. Number three for Ross. His epic lightsaber duel with Ahsoka in the final season of Clone Wars. Definitely. Now, so far, that's the most common one. Number three for Ben. Duel with Ahsoka. Hey. The setup was epic. Best animation I've ever seen. It's also Ahsoka's biggest moment to prove herself. Interesting. Very interesting. Would you say Palpatine's power was palpable? I'll see myself out. Yeah, Colby. Come on. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I, I always appreciate a good dad joke. Certainly. I make him every day. Blake's number three. Maul trying to warn Ahsoka that something horrible was coming with Order 66 during the Clone Wars finale. It was terrifying to see his reaction to what was happening. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's another good little nuanced part. Had I more time, I would have rewatched a lot of his stuff in Clone Wars and Rebels to think about that because those are all really great. Brian's number three. When he fights Ahsoka on Mandalore, can't beat a double blade lightsaber versus two lightsabers. Good point. James, number three. Blinding Kanan and Twilight of the Apprentice just to show how sneaky and evil he was. I thought about that one, too. I didn't put it because I like Kanan so much, even though it did certainly build character and suspense and tension. No doubt about that. Good call, James. Number three for Mason is when he fights Ahsoka. So again, that is, I don't know if anybody's keeping a tally, but him fighting Ahsoka is definitely the most popular one that people have brought up so far. But now we're in the top two, so I feel like we're going to see one particular scene a lot. My number two, speaking of that, is the Naboo hangar entrance. It's before the duel. It's when we hear the duel of the fates. When the doors open up, when Maul is there, he takes off his hood. Qui-Gon says to Anakin, you know, stay in that cockpit. And Padme sees Maul and says, we'll take the long way. And you know they're about to fight. Obi-Wan and, and Qui-Gon remove their robes and get ready for this old-fashioned samurai duel. It's a goosebump Star Wars moment. Even now, total goosebump moment. It's just spectacular. Okay. Let's see. Aaron's number three was realizing that Kenobi is alive and arriving back to Tatooine to face his greatest nemesis. Awesome. Uh, Tyler's number two, reveal of the second blade, one of my favorite moments in the series. Oh, yeah, that ties into my number two. Good good point. When he pulls that now iconic pose and pops that second blade, I still get excited like when I was nine. Yes, yes. Same, same here, man. Matthew, Darth Maul versus Qui-Gon, one of my favorite lightsaber battles from the movies. Parker really puts his skills on display and to take on two Jedi. I loved every moment. Yes, Ray Park was awesome in that for sure. Ross number two, Maul uh, pacing back and forth like a tiger ready to attack as the electric shield was up between him and Qui-Gon in the Phantom Menace. You can just hear the drum, the boom, boom, boom. He's going back and forth. The Bengal tiger thing is totally apt. Number two for where'd it go? For Mary in Rebels with Ezra using the holocrons. Yes, combining those holocrons was very cool. Number two for Blake. His final duel with Kenobi, Years of Hate and Revenge, ended in seconds. It was much more emotional than I could ever imagine it could be between the two. The whole ending to that episode had this blue collar trucker driver in tears. <laughs> I love it. Well said, Blake. Number two for Brian. When he puts the pieces of the puzzle together and figures out Sidious's plan in Season 7 of The Clone Wars, yeah, I can just see it in his eyes like that. Like, he, he admires a genius, and he also thinks, i got to get out of here. I'm not safe. If Darth Maul is scared, you know it's a problem. Number two for Ben, the final match between Kenobi and Maul. They've experienced so much, and in Maul's final moments, he realizes they have more in common to defeat Palpatine Dan 
I think we have opposite first and seconds. Ah, we might, buddy. Let's find out. Mason's number two is when he fights Obi-Wan in the Phantom Menace. This is just Obi-Wan and Maul after Qui-Gon has unfortunately passed away. But they have the stunt work is up even more because Kenobi really gets a chance to shine this the one on one. So that's Mason's number two. It's a great one. Uh, Aaron's number two, just watching the Palpatine fight again while I'm on here to replace the scene where he kills the team in front of Kenobi and takes second place. All right. Aaron Harris is here, host, uh, co-host of Star Wars Reactions. Hello, buddy. He says, I would actually say number two would be his monologue in the desert at the beginning of Twin Suns. Yes, that's cool. There's not a lot of words in that monologue. We're not talking Hamlet here. But it's definitely, definitely memorable. Josh, Twin Suns, Rebels is my second favorite Star Wars series, and this is one of the many reasons why. An excellent episode towards the end of Season 3, Maul, driven to near madness, is trying yet again to kill Obi-Wan. Eventually he finds him, and they talk for a moment with some truly excellent dialogue. They're very brief. It's an amazing, awesome duel. Kenobi finally kills his 20-plus year long enemy, shows how noble he is by taking no pleasure in it, and even brings Maul peace through Luke. Well, that is a good explanation. And also, by the way, my number one, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. James, number two, Maul versus Ahsoka and Clone Wars. Awesome. Love it, James. That's a great one. My number five. So Josh mentioned number one, so I won't say too much more about it, but it is my favorite moment. And not because Darth Maul's story is over and not because of any reason other than at the end, like long term, long time enemies. They find peace with one another in very, very samurai fashion. Almost, there's almost like a moment of forgiveness, even though it's unspoken. And Obi Wan is almost nurturing in uh, as Maul takes his final breaths, and it's really beautiful, really well done, really classy, really kind of ups. It makes Maul more than just a mustache twitching bad guy that's mean and angry, because I think that's kind of boring. So I like that they gave, they humanized him at the end. And showed the, the great compassion of Obi-Wan Kenobi and why he's the great Jedi that he is. So that's my number one twin sons. Uh, Mason wants me to want me to point out that if he was ranking his favorite Darth Maul moments, this would be number infinity when uh, he when Darth Maul dies in Twin Sons. So there's like infinity things between there and number one for him. So he really doesn't like that, and it's my favorite one. So we are very much on the opposite ends of the spectrum there. Matthew's number one. When you first see Maul in an episode, you can't, you can just tell how evil and anticipation for when this new Sith will bring us so much potential. Brief but awesome. We'll have to watch more Rebels. Matthew, if you like Maul, Rebels is great. Great. Seasons two and three are mind blowingly good. I mean, the whole series is great, but the Maul stuff is really good too. Number one for Ross. Oh, cool. His hot little appearance near the end of Solo, a Star Wars story, was, it completely caught me off guard. It was a jaw dropping moment. Come on. Disney Plus, Kira and Maul. Boy, that would be so cool, Ross. From your mouth to Kathleen Kennedy's ears, buddy. Number one for Tyler, the Maul way scene. Him uh, tearing through the hallway using just the force is nothing less than epic. Peak Star Wars action, in my opinion. Nice. Nice. That was pretty slick. That was slick. Number one for Mary, Maul versus Ahsoka in the Siege of Mandalore. Nice. Uh, number one for Aaron, same as mine, the final battle with Kenobi and Twin Sons. Number one for Blake, Maul igniting that double lightsaber run for the first time in episode one. I was original, an original trilogy fan first, but my first theatrical Star Wars experience was The Phantom Menace, and the image was so powerful to 10-year-old me in 1999. Yes. So you were 10, Tyler was 9, and I was... Hmm, 27. <laughs> it still blew me away, too. Blew me away too. Uh, ben, no, I was 26. Sorry, sorry, not that old. It was 26. Number one for Ben, Maul's hangar entrance paired with Duel of the Fates, oof, chills, and the whole fight is epic. So, Ben, I guess we were kind of opposites, weren't we? I love it. Number one for Brian, the Jedi and the Queen are going to take out the Viceroy, and the doors open to show a dark figure with yellow eyes. Insert the best Star Wars music. Bum, you know, some aw awesome lights of reaction is going to happen. And does it ever? I actually saw that, of course, a number of times in the theater, but I also saw it in a drive-in. I remember hearing the bass come through my car of the Duel of Fates. It was so cool. Aaron's number one, Ahsoka, Clone Wars. Everything about it was Chef's Kiss. 
takes away every other scene and leave me that, I'll be happy Two of my favorite characters coming together for the best battle, in my opinion. Yes. Great, Aaron. Fantastic. Mason's number one favorite mall moment is he first reveals a double-bladed lightsaber. Like, um, I believe Tyler and someone else had mentioned, but for Mason, that moment is epically good. And it is. It's great. It's great stuff. So there you go. So that, thank you everybody for sharing your top five favorite mall slash Darth Maul moments with all of us. Great job. Great job, Mason and everyone with your list. So now we've got an interesting situation. Let's talk about next week. Next week is a mystery topic. Now this is the kind of thing if you listen to CWK Pour Over, our exclusive weekly podcast for members of the CWK Alliance. This is the kind of thing that would drive Corey Club crazy. But I'm going to turn my lights back to blue now. There we go. Uh, but this is going to be different. Uh, uh, Blake says, Mason has some great taste in mall moments. Well, I, moments, I will certainly pass that along, buddy. Josh is number one. Shades of Reason slash The Lawless, some of the best episodes of Clone Wars. Last two episodes of the three long arc when he takes over Darth Death Watch and Mandalore. Very... An incredible, amazing dialogue between him and Obi-Wan, especially with Maul murder Satine. Uh, let's see. An amazing fight against Sidious. Matthew says, oh my. That's right. James, number one. First appearance in episode one. As soon as you see him in episode one, all he remembers thinking is, wow, he looks like the devil. Also later on when you see him, of course, not the way he speaks. Didn't say much, but I know that he was epic. Dun, dun, dun. That was a good one, James. Yeah, so the reason this one's a mystery is we're actually doing something new next week. We're actually not going to be on Monday. This is a one-time deal. I mean, as far as I know. I mean, my schedule's been pretty consistent. I believe we're going on one year of Facebook Live, by the way. I need to check on that if somebody knows off the top of their head. But next week, it's a special day in time. It's actually going to be March 28th, which is a Sunday. It's going to be at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. So it's a day earlier and an hour earlier than usual. We have a Star Wars mystery topic. Lots of surprises, and naturally, your comments and questions. We're going to have some special guests, a lot of fun stuff. This is definitely where the fun begins. I can't wait to share it. It's going to be a bit of a surprise, but we are very excited. So, again, be sure to tune in next week, March 28th at 7 o'clock, um, special day and time. So, there will be no show next Monday. It's going to be on Sunday. James is honorable mention. His first appearance in Clone Wars when Savage finds him with his crazy spider legs. That's good. Blake says, like most things in my life, I wing it and hope for the best. Next week, CWK Live will be no different. That's good. Uh, Ross is pumped. Mary's excited. Matthew says, can't wait. I'm on spring break. Great. Well, I'm actually on spring break too, so that's cool. That's going to be fun. Let's go ahead and jump in here. Again, next week will be a mystery topic. And be sure to join us next Sunday for a special show on March 28th at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Since when does a teacher not give homework? Well, the homework is you just got to be there. You got to you gotta join us. A Jar Jar Top 5? No way, man. I would announce that. You'd have to prepare for that one for sure. All right, let's go ahead and jump into Ask Dan Z, shall we? All right. So what questions do you have for me? as we close out the show a little bit quicker of a show this week actually so do you have any questions for me before we wrap things up uh yes a mystery mason and uh, blake says top five cory club moments <laughs> i'm gonna have to pass that along to him i think he will get a big kick out of that yes cory top five uh matthew top five ships it's actually not going to be a top five it's going to be more like me asking you questions and telling you some fun things that are happening so that's good. Uh, let's see. Anybody else have any questions for me as we wrap up today's show? Again, a quick show, but a fun one, talking about your top five favorite Darth Maul moments. Next week, it again, is going to be a surprise show uh, on Sunday at 7 o'clock. Josh says, did I catch Zack Snyder's Justice League over the weekend? I did not. I want to. It's certainly on my list, Tyler. I certainly want to join in the conversation for that. Uh, much more to share 
on that for sure. Blake, did I have been reading in Marvel Star Wars comics recently? Yes, Blake, I am caught up. What about you? What do you, what do you think? What's going on? Uh, ben, how does it feel to have a 400 episodes? 400 episodes feels amazing. It feels very much like it hasn't been almost eight years, but also feels like it has. It's kind of hard to explain. But hopefully you got a chance to hear our 400th episode with my lovely wife, Deanna, and my awesome son, youngest son, Mason. Talking about behind the scenes of going to the premiere of The Rise of Skywalker, what it's like behind the scenes here on Facebook Live and the podcast, and so much more. Do I know the timeline for the next High Republic books? I do not. I do not, Mary. As soon as I find out, I will certainly share it as well on the podcast and all over social media. Mason's excited about a Corey list. Did I make a March Madness bracket? Yes, I did, and I had Illinois winning it all. My whole family did, so we're in trouble there. Uh, anytime I picked a Big Ten team, they let me down pretty much, so that was that was harsh. What program do I use for live? I use a number of programs, but the main one I use for the broadcast is called Ecamm for Mac. It's really nice. Uh, James, is it possible for Sith to become Force Ghosts? It is not. Uh, and actually, we talked about that in the Star Wars book. But one of the main reasons it's not possible is because they don't want to let go of their power. They want to harness it here uh, in the material world. And that's why Palpatine is obsessed with maintaining his life force because he, believe, he wants all the power now. He doesn't believe in a cosmic force. So no, they can't become force ghosts. Good question. Uh, not a question, but I wanted to say this week's episode was great hearing Deanna and Mason was awesome. Well, thanks, Kobe. I'll be sure to pass that along with them. Uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, love, love, loved it. I love the tone. I love the intensity. I love that it's a very different look from WandaVision. Sticking in June with the Winter Soldier and Civil War particularly, but brilliant pacing and character stuff. Uh, Marvel does it great. I felt like we were back in the Scum and Villainy Canteen in Hollywood. That's right. That's right. That's so cool. All right, June 29th is the next one, The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott. That's exactly right. Uh, and if I'm in, not incorrect, I think Mary wanted to know like, when it takes place. Like, not when it comes out, but when it actually happens in the story. Uh, how about Blake to the Bears? Look, the Bears quarterback situation is, oh, the whole thing is a mess. I, I wish I could somehow pause or fast forward through the next season. Thank you, Ross. Is Mary, absolutely. Blake says, love you, Dan. You're the best. We have the best Star Wars community online. Love y'all. Hey, man, we love you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, remember, don't forget to join us next week for a special Sunday show. It's going to be March 28th at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We will be promoting it all week on social media and on the podcast. This week we got a fun one coming your way. So have a great week and weekend, everybody. And remember, this is the podcast you're looking for. Thanks again, everybody. We will see you on Sunday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time for a surprise show. See you then.